Hi everyone, I am your muse Tracy and I am your favorite manifestation coach. I am here to inspire you and empower you to live the life of your dreams, to create on purpose exactly what you want in all areas of your life, to stop settling and to stop suffering. You are not here to suffer. If that sounds good to you, you are more than welcome to subscribe to my channel. I do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you would like to get some help on your journey with working through your beliefs and manifesting, you can find that information down below in the description box. All right, you guys. So the topic for today is how you create on autopilot. So I didn't really include <laughs> the qualifier in the title because I want to talk about both. I want to talk about how you create on autopilot what you don't want, what you don't prefer. We're going to talk about that first. And then, of course, what we really want to know and learn is how to create on autopilot what we do want, what we do prefer. Okay. So yes, I left that detail out so that I can talk about both of these things. Okay, so I wanna start with how you create on autopilot and let's just go back to before you knew about manifesting, about being a conscious creator because you have always been manifesting. Uh, if you're new to my channel or if you're new to this concept or you've never heard me say that before, get prepared because this is how it is. You've always been manifesting your entire life, okay? On autopilot before you knew about manifesting because that's just how this works. It's not that once you learn about manifesting, okay, now everything is, you know, your creation. No, everything has always been your creation. So that's the thing, you guys. It's whether you know you're doing it or you don't know you're doing it, AKA whether you're doing it unconsciously or whether you're doing it consciously, you're doing it. You're doing it and you have always been doing it, okay? So now that we have that clear, let's go back to the time before you knew about manifesting, before you knew about, um, you know, anything about it, um, law of attraction, law of assumption, your thoughts creating, how to affirm, mental diet, before you knew about any of that. And of course, we'll take the situation of a specific person, of a relationship. So a lot of times what I see happen with a lot of my clients and also what I went through in my personal experience as well, is you meet this person, a person, and you know, you probably have some level of a high concept to rendezvous with this person and to have a good interaction, right? They're reflecting back to you in the beginning, your high concept of yourself. And a lot of times that high concept is when we don't, we're not invested. We're not invested in the person, right? We don't have a vested interest. We're just floating along in life, thinking that we're great, thinking that we deserve good things. And then, so we, we rendezvous with this person, they reflect back, we have an amazing time, however long that might be. For some people, it's a night. Uh, for some people, it's a week, a month, a year, two years, okay, before some other programming kicks in, right? So we ha meet this person, we have an amazing time for some different amount of time, and then we become invested in this person. We decide, oh, this is maybe a person that I could see myself with. Maybe I do wanna be with them. Look at all their amazing qualities. And so our dynamic shifts, the dynamic within you, because before your self-concept, you know, with no, um, nothing invested, no feelings, no interest is one thing. That's one self-concept. Now the self-concept, where you actually like this person and you want them to like you back, that's another self-concept, okay? So now when this other self-concept kicks in because we now have a vested interest in this person, there's programming that comes along with that self-concept, the self-concept of, ooh, I really like this person and I want them to like me. So things like insecurities, like fears, like doubts, like 
what we believe we're worthy of, what we think we're capable of, all of that is the programming that starts to bubble up and come to the surface and it starts to run the show on autopilot, on autopilot, okay? Now, that doesn't mean that overnight your insecure thoughts of, am I enough? Does my SP love me? Uh, do they wanna be with me? Do they wanna marry me? It's not that those things will create a shift in them overnight, it can, depending on the intensity of that programming, the intensity with which you focus on it, the intensity with which you feel fear around it. So it can, it can show up overnight. It can show up, it could take a year to show up, right? Again, depending on the intensity that you feel the fear, the insecurities, the doubts, and the worries, okay? So this programming that you have within yourself um, it's like a filter. It's a, it's a, your self-concept is a filter. It's programming that you took on at a young age or developed over time through your life experiences, maybe past relationships. And that programming starts creating on autopilot. And so again, the timing is different for everyone. I don't want you to focus so much on the timing, but at some point, your experience with this person changes. They say that they don't wanna be in the relationship, they disappear, they whatever, something happens where they are no longer in your life in whatever capacity they were in your life. And the thing that I wanna point out here is that's not being done to you. That's not being done to you. That is being created, has been created by your programming, your unconscious programming, your unconscious thoughts, the worries, the doubts, the fears, insecurities. It has been created. Your SP has never had free will to choose to leave the situation. If they left the situation, that was a creation from your programming. That's how your programming created on autopilot. Okay, so now as they leave the situation, leave your life, then, you know, this is usually the point where people start to learn about manifesting. They start to learn that their thoughts create and they start to learn about visualizing, inner conversations, scripting, affirmations, having a mental diet. And so they go to work. They go to work and they start to do all these techniques, but all the while that programming that was creating on autopilot is still there. It's still there unless you address it. So all these things that you're doing, that you're learning, they are valuable. That is, that is how you be a conscious creator once you change your programming. You do the affirmations, you do the scripting, whatever technique you like. By the way, it's not the technique that creates, it's what resonates with you, you pick the one that resonates with you and you do that technique. And that's how you create if you have changed your programming. But let me explain why so many people struggle. Because again, the process that I've explained so far, they meet the person, they have a little honeymoon phase, they spend time together, however long that time is. And then the programming that was already there before this person came into the picture, by the way, this person didn't create this programming. Your programming was already there. And depending on the degree of the intensity, that's how long it takes for the person to eventually leave. The person didn't choose to leave. They cannot choose to do anything. They are simply your creation, right? So again, I'm explaining all this once again. So now you have heartbreak, you learn about manifesting, and you start to employ all these techniques. This is exactly why you struggle because that old programming that sent them away in the first place is still there and it's still running the show on autopilot, on autopilot, behind the scenes, okay? And then you're affirming, and with this, what I'm explaining, these techniques, you can get some results. You can even get some astonishing results. You can get some, you know, really miraculous changes. The thing is, because your programming is still there, the programming that eventually, you know, initially sent them away is still there. When you bring them in and you get your astonishing results, if you do, some people get no results, some people get minuscule results, some people get amazing results. So you get the results you get, your programming is still there. When they come back, 
guess what happens? You spend that time together and then this stuff starts to bubble up once again. And the person either um, is the wrong version. They're still in your life, but they're, you know, not the greatest version. They're, you know, kind of having a lot of attributes that you don't actually prefer or like. So they're in your life, but it's not the right version. And, or they just go out again. They go out again. So you guys see, can you, can you understand what I'm saying here that you're, you're, programming is is what's creating on autopilot okay and yes you can affirm over it you can do the things over it but that will only get you so far and you know I know you guys have been hearing me talk about this in my videos and you guys have been emailing me I love it I love that you're here by the way thank you also so for so much of the support that you're giving me I really appreciate it I feel the love I love you guys back and that's why I'm doing these videos because I really want you guys to understand how you get results, right? It's in my intro. You're not here to suffer. You're not here to, you know, make it hard and bang your head up against a wall. No, you are the creator of your life. And what I really want to teach you guys is the right way to do it. So we got to go back and change the programming. And this isn't the most glamorous part, right? We have to go back and like really um, unbiasedly observe, you know, our... <laughs> ourself and how we've, you know, seen these things, these patterns perpetuate and create over and over and over. It's not the most fun thing. I will be the first to tell you. And I'll also be the first to tell you that I didn't want to do it. I had no interest. Nope. I just want my SP and I avoided doing it for a long time, but there is no avoiding it <laughs> all the way because your SP is you. Your SP is a mirror of you. And so if you cover up something still going on inside of you, unhealed, unresolved, I don't love the word healed, but you guys know what I'm saying. The unresolved, unpreferred thoughts that you have about you, that's really what it is. You don't feel your best. You're not the best version of you. How can you expect your SP to show up and be the glorious version that you want to experience? I think you guys can understand and realize that that's a unrealistic expectation, right? And the, the point is, even if you can bring your SP back in in all their glory and, you know, super shiny and, um, and handsome or beautiful and saying all the right things, you can totally agree that if you bring them back and you still have these negative feelings about you, the negative concept about you, the way you think about you still isn't great, how are you gonna feel when Mr. Wonderful or Mrs. Wonderful shows up in your reality? It's not gonna feel good. It's not gonna feel good, I don't think, because you still have you there and you still don't think highly of yourself. Right? So you guys can see very crystal clear how it doesn't work or it works only to a certain degree. This is all about you. This is about you. And so we go back and we clean it all up <laughs> and make it sound so easy, right? Clean it all up, That go through the past, go through the history, go through the programming. What is in there? What is in there? And this is not like a one-time, you know, thing. This takes a little bit of work. It takes a little bit of digging because if you're any, anything like me and anything like a lot of my clients, we don't have the best memory. We don't have like all the memories of everything that happened and, you know, everything that went on and everything that shaped our programming right there. It kind of comes in waves and in, you know, oh yeah. And one thing leads to another and remembering another and remembering another. And, but you see, the thing is, is it starts to become so crystal clear about how it's all been you. It's all been you. So now, once we go back, we examine all the programming, we uh, understand exactly what the programming is there, we see how it's been created again and again, again and again and again in your life, and we also go through releasing the emotions around that, very important. Again, not the most fun thing to do, but those emotions that are still tied to your past, they're literally not just tethering you to the past. Those emotions are 
seeking release. They're seeking release, you guys. And so you are going to, because again, you are the creator in your reality, you're going to unconsciously, you know, not on purpose, but you're going to repeatedly create circumstances, create situations that give this emotion an outlet, AKA reacting. So you're gonna have these situations and these circumstances pop up so that this emotion can get released. Not the best way, not the best way, not the ideal way. It's much better if you can go inside try to identify where these emotions came from and do the releasing process within you. Resolve, those emotions just wanna be validated. They just wanna be felt. They just wanna be not suppressed. That's it. And if you go through that process of releasing the emotions to your past, you you unbind yourself from that and you stop creating the circumstances where those emotions can have an outlet to come back up, okay? So it's happening on both sides. You're untethering yourself from your past and you're not going to keep recreating circumstances where that emotion can seep out a little bit before you push it back down, okay? So we go through the beliefs, we go through releasing the emotions and then, and then because you guys already know, you've already been learning about manifestation, you know how to script, visualize, inner conversations, affirm, mental diet. I think you guys know how to do this stuff, right? Now with your new programming, your new programming, guess what it does? Guess what this programming does? This programming also creates on autopilot. Just like your old programming that you didn't really want was creating on autopilot, this new shiny preferred programming, program, programming about money. Let's talk about money for a second. Okay, it's re relevant. So the money situation is a little bit different, right? Because probably your money situation hasn't changed so much since childhood. Maybe it has, I don't know, you guys tell me. But typically what I see is people learn a certain uh, concept about money and they sort of just keep recreating that situation with money throughout their life, throughout their life, throughout their life. And they can affirm, you know, like money comes to me easy, money comes in this amount every month. And again, you might get some results. You might get, you know, a little bit here and there. You might even get an amazing result. But do you keep it? Do you keep it? And do you build to the next level immediately? No. Because why? Because you're doing the affirmations, but you didn't go back to the core programming that says, I only get to have a certain amount, right? So even if you do manifest something, you manifest a bill right on the other side of it, right? So it's the same thing with money. It's the same thing with any subject, with health. Uh, it's the same thing with physical appearance. It's all just the outpicturing of your mind. Period. So if you want to create on autopilot what you actually prefer, it's all about going back and changing the programming. What do you believe about money? Do you believe that money comes in abundance and builds up and always becomes more? Or do you believe that money runs out and you have to store it away and not use it? If you use it, that's bad. And you have to stuff it aside and be scared of it. Okay, now it's over here, but I'm scared of it. What would you prefer to believe? You see, these beliefs that are sort of there now, you want to take inventory and ask yourself, is that what I want to believe? Is that what I want to believe? Because if it's not, why are you not doing the work to change it? Why are you not changing those beliefs? This is your reality. This is your reality. And you are here to experience the life that you want to experience, that you prefer to experience. Nobody told you that though. Nobody told you that. People shared their not so great programming with you and then you've just accidentally been creating your life on autopilot with someone else's programming, right? Not, not the best idea. So it's a, the same thing on any subject. Whatever's showing up in your reality right now is you. It's the out picturing of your mind. And so a change in consciousness, AKA a change in your beliefs, creates a change in the environment on autopilot. 
on autopilot. I really want to stress this part, you guys, and I hope that the way I've walked through this has made it crystal clear. That's my hope. That's my, I'm not hoping, that's my intention for this video. So go back and watch it again if you didn't get like this clear picture about how it's on autopilot, okay? It's on autopilot. Manifesting is not hard. It's not work. It's just the out picturing of what you say I am to, what you're conscious of being. Are you conscious of being loved and being worthy or are you conscious of not being enough? Look around for your environment to get a clue of what you really believe, okay? And so <laughs> you guys have been hearing me talk about this and it's all about going back and examining what's in there, okay? And yeah, so that's my goal is to really help you guys understand what it takes to be a master manifester, create on purpose, understand who you are. You are the creator, the one and only creator of your reality. You are unlimited. There's nothing off limits to you and everything already exists. Everything already exists. So if everything is already available, your SP, money, health, appearance, uh, whatever it is, if that's already available to you, why aren't you experiencing it? It's not because you didn't affirm correctly. It's not because you didn't visualize correctly. It's not because you didn't meditate correctly. It's not any of those things. You know how to do those things perfectly, brilliantly. It's because of the belief system that's still running the show on autopilot. All right, you guys, that's it for this one. Leave me a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.